As you may know, with any 3D printer, the most important layer is your first, as any inconsistencies and mistakes in this layer will cascade and affect every subsequent layer. It's the foundation for the entire 3D print. An essential part of 3D printer preparation is preparing the build plate and ensuring that not only is the gantry parallel to the build plate, but that the build plate itself is level. Within 3D printing, you will often hear the term level, which doesn't mean breaking up the bubble level and checking that something is parallel with the ground, but that the nozzle, or in this case screen, is the same distance from the build plate at any point along its surface. More accurately, this would be called tramming your bed. Not only is it important to have your bed parallel to your nozzle, or in this case your screen, but having a surface as flat as possible is the other half of the equation. It's common for inexpensive 3D printer build plates to be dished or bent, which is where automatic bed levelers come in handy. They pick up the slack and constantly adjust the nozzle's distance from the bed so it doesn't change and you have uniform bed adhesion. In the case of resin 3D printing, however, it just it won't work like that. Instead, you have to rely on the surface itself being truly flat in order for it to work. We're going to do two things achieve the flattest possible surface we can, and add texture, both of which promote print adhesion and lead to better resin 3D prints. 120 grit as a single sheet the size of your build plate to create flatness. 80 grit as a single sheet the size of your build plate to add texture. While a surface plate made of granite is one of the flattest pieces of equipment anyone could find, most will not have access to one. Instead, take a metal straight edge and lay the side across the surface you want to test for flatness. Shine a flashlight from behind and toward the bottom edge, looking for any spots where light peeks out from underneath. If you can't see the light at all, great! This is a fantastic surface that is as flat as we need for this process. Be sure to rotate the ruler a couple times to make sure it's not just that specific spot that's flat, and rather, the entire surface. You're also going to need isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free cloth. This is just used to clean up throughout the process. Wear gloves. You'll need this just for general cleanliness as well as avoiding getting leftover resin or metal dust on your skin. Wear a mask. Breathing aluminum dust is not recommended. Remove your build plate from the 3D printer. If your resin 3D printer has recently been used, be sure to clean off any excess resin. Then you can clean it off thoroughly with isopropyl alcohol and dry it with a lint-free cloth. Place your piece of 120 grit sandpaper down on the flattest surface you can find. In this case, we're using a piece of glass. Press down lightly on the build plate as evenly as you can and slide it away from you. Lift the build plate off the sandpaper, bring it back to you, press it down, and repeat four more times. Take a look at the build plate. You should see the high spots as the parts showing scratches, and the low spots should be untouched and clearly a different finish. Rotate the build plate 90 degrees and repeat the process. Continue rotating the build plate until you have sanded in each direction. Clean away any dust from the build plate. Inspect the sanded surface and look for unsanded areas. Continue the sanding process until these low spots disappear. It should be clear that you are done when the surface of the build plate is sanded such that no low spots are visible and the entire surface has been roughed up. Swap out the 120 grit sandpaper sheet for an 80 grit sheet and this time diagonally slide the build plate to put some deep scratches into the build plate. This will add texture for prints to grab onto. Then you can go back to the 120 grit sandpaper and just lightly give it a little scuff and this will help break down any burrs that may have been created by the 80 grit sandpaper while still leaving behind its deep gouges. Once you've sanded and roughed your resin printer's build plate, you need to give it a good cleanup with isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free cloth. Then you can reinstall it back in your printer. Perform the normal leveling routine for your 3D printer and take as much time in adjusting as you need to leave your build plate as parallel to the LCD as it feasibly can be. From there, you are ready to print. I would recommend starting conservatively with your print settings and work your way up to the limits of your machine. Give your layers more time to cure and have peel speeds slower than usual. That way you can really test things one at a time and know that your bottom exposure time is causing problems, not the level of your bed. In our experience, sanding and roughing up our build plates has made a huge improvement in the bed adhesion for resin 3D printing, even for the resins that are more temperamental with sticking to the bed. At Matter Hackers, it is our goal to guide you to success in 3D printing through providing superior products and knowledge. Hopefully, through the help of this guide, your resin 3D prints have a much higher success rate than before and have turned resin 3D printing into a much more enjoyable process. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Matter Hackers YouTube channel and find us at Matter Hackers on all your favorite social media platforms. To learn more and to order all the resin 3D printing accessories you might need, go to matterhackers.com.